We'll see if we can find one suckling. Um, here we go. Oh, it's a nice big cow. See, there's that none of that sort of very distinct. Start and end your. Day. Oh, you can. I don't know if you guys heard that. So, with the herds, there's a. There's a lot of people asking where the lions are in relation to the buffalo. Unfortunately, the buffalo have moved north and the lions, I'm sorry, the buffalo have moved west and the, the lions have moved east. So, unfortunately, or we never know, there could be other lions that come in from the north or from the, from the west. But at the moment, the lions we saw last night are quite a long way away from here. I don't know if you heard that so you hear that very often around a buffalo herd. There's a lot of sort of argy bargy, so to speak, pushing and shoving and um, that goes on in a buffalo herd. Oh shame. Um, that one, that buffalo you're on, Andrew. If you just go back to its back leg and then zoom in a little bit. Oh, she's moving. She's got a wound there. It almost looks like a fungal infection, though. It's actually gone raw, and there's lots of flies in it. Uh, all the flies could be keeping it open. So let's have a look. There's quite a lot of calves in here. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear that. I think I've got an idea. What we're going to do, there's a big termite mound up ahead. I'm going to see if we can just get a bit of ev elevation so we can look down on the herd. A very, very important cog in the ecosystem here, in these big herds of buffalo. Because they come through the grass, they come through, trample the grass, uh, and what uh, other important thing they do is as they move, they fertilize by defecating as they go. So that's very important um, for the push. So they're sort of big mobile lawn mowers and fertilizing machines all, in, all rolled into one. There we can see there's a young bull in front of us here. Whoops, there's a big stump that in the grass we didn't see. There we go. Um, just quickly, Andrew, I don't know if you see the calf between the back legs. Now that's a very special adaptation that um, buffalo have because the herds move so often. The calves will suckle from between the mother's legs and they can suckle while on the move. So what this does is it enables the herd to remain mobile and, and the youngsters to still <laughs> and the youngsters to still be able to feed while the herd is moving. And you can see that if you go slightly to the right, and that one is also between his mom's legs and and suckling. So and it's quite an interesting um, interesting feeding method. The one unfortunate thing being a little buffalo suckling between your mom's back legs is you quite often get pooed on. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it a few times while while suckling. The poor poor youngsters have had um, had. Um, been defecated on. Uh, I'm wondering where all the breeding bulls are. They'll be around. At the moment I can only see some young bulls. Um, let's see why Andrew pans. I'll see. Keep keep coming a little bit. There we go. That guy in center of frame now. You can see he's a young bull. You can see his boss is starting to develop, but there's still a lot of hair on it and it's still quite soft. the young bull. So they've probably been resting and they'll look to start moving possibly quite shortly um, unless they've been moving from early this morning but it looks like from the flattened grass that they spent the night in this area. So they would have, oh there we go, there's a bit of argy bargy. And these 
lizards will normally drink once a day, sometimes twice a day. And as the seasons become drier, um, the, the herds quite often become a bit bigger and they, they join up with other herds. And that's to avoid predation from lions because as I'm sure a lot of you have seen, buffalo sometimes are very, very defensive over the young. Even though if the lions catch a buffalo part of the herd, the bulls will come back and chase the lions off. Um, so in bigger herds, obviously there's more big bulls that make it a bit easier for them to defend against lions. And also with a lot of animals, they're just working on the law of averages. The more of us there are, the less likely I'm the one that's going to get eaten. You can see lots of oxpeckers with the herd. Welcome on board. And we've just stumbled across a breeding herd of elephants. So that's great news. We haven't seen elephant for so long. And there's most of them are crossing from left to right over the road. And I can still see one that needs to cross over, possibly more. So we'll just wait for that one because it's going to provide us the best view. Sadly, we're in a very thick area here. And there are, a f because it is a breeding herd, we don't want to intrude too much on their space because the mothers with their young can be quite defensive. Brian is doing the correct thing and he's going to pan across to some other elephants while we wait for the other individual to cross. And there he's found a youngster. And you can see quite a few moving even in the background behind the one that's in shot. The individual on the left knob, Brian, is probably going to start working for you very shortly. Well, isn't this great news? And I did say yesterday, the elephant come and go. They're not bound to a certain territory or area. They simply go wherever the food takes them. And the beauty of the Kruger National Park, which is the park that we are adjoined to, it's a massive, massive ecosystem and it allows animals to move freely, huge distances, which therefore means us as humans don't need to intervene in any way, which is sometimes required in smaller reserves, which are completely fenced in. This is a female that we're looking at. And you can tell that even just from seeing that small part of her body. And what you're looking for here is, on the forehead, a female's head will be, will come to kind of a 90 degree point at the tip of the forehead. Whereas males, there you can see it nicely now. Whereas the males will have a far more rounded skull or forehead. There we go. That's the angle we're looking for. You can also notice there's a small gland behind her eye where you can see some liquid has trickled down. Not very fresh, but that's a, known as a temporal gland. and They exude liquid when the elephants become excited. It could be emotions of happiness or sadness, distress. So, something that's useful to keep an eye on because if it is leaking heavily, you could be therefore forewarned of any potential excitement from the elephants.
It's unbelievable how silently such large animals can move through thick vegetation. The rest of the herd is now out of sight to the right of us. And they've slunk off with very little noise. Well, the good news is it's not just one that needs to still cross the road. I've just heard and seen another one who will also be crossing. Look at that tail of hers. And they do hold them up like that. It can sometimes mean that they're getting agitated, but I'm not sure why she did it there. I think it's possibly because she was negotiating herself over some tricky terrain as she c climbed over a fallen down knobthorn tree which in all likelihood another elephant pushed over a while back you see how she used her foot there to help her break off a clump of grass Beautiful. I'm just going to creep forward ever so slightly. 